Okay, so picking up where we left off, let's uh, make the stop sign change where we're talking about having it change. We already dropped this at the spot where we think we want it to, to appear where it's supposed, supposed to start changing. So let's select the clip and uh, let's do something kind of cool. There's a, let's go to the effects over on the left side. And if you type in the word difference, uh, a keying option for difference map will pop up. And this will allow you to do some kind of interesting stuff with the difference blending. So I'm going to drag that onto the clip. And you see that it automatically does some initial presets up here. So it's basically saying, here, let's actually open that up a little bit more. It's basically saying that it's going to look at the final output, which is fine. And then it's looking at the layer to, to apply the difference to. Well, right now it's saying apply it to layer two. Well, this is on layer two. The thing that we're actually applying it to is on layer two. We want to make it different from, apply a difference from vi uh, video layer one. So let's change that to video layer one, which is where the slides background is. And then uh, we'll leave it on center. And then let's change the tolerance and let's, uh, and, and also the softness. And we'll raise this up some and see kind of how it starts to degrade and disappear a little bit. It's kind of interesting. And then we can soften it up too so that it has like a really soft look. Um, and let's just turn this down a little bit so it's not quite so harsh, like somewhere around here. And let's turn the softness up somewhat. And you can start to see that it's, it's blown out a little bit, so maybe that's a little bit much, or we could have it like really start to disappear. And we could also see what happens if we adjust the blur as well. But anyway, there's some different things that you can kind of do to to fool around with it. Uh, and so let's just see what happens whenever we do that. They also inspire change to stop. I'd like to. And then maybe where it actually says stop, we can actually have the stop sign disappear. Stop. So let's try that again. Stop. OK. And then I'm going to scroll this up a little, or move this up a little bit, so that I can actually see where the word stop ends, which is about right here. And then what we can do is we can bump this back, trim it. And let's see if that works for us. So inspire change to stop. I actually think that I want it to happen at the beginning of the word stop. Let's see if that's where it is. To stop. I think it's somewhere around here. So let's try bumping that back. So trim it. Let's see how that sounds. They also inspire change to stop. Okay, so it's pretty close. It might be, it might be just a little bit. Here, I'm going to expand the timeline, so I can actually see better what's going on. I think it might be right here. It might prematurely end. So, let's try dragging it back out again. Sure. And while they also inspire change, to stop. That's a little bit better. Okay, so now what I can do is come back here, and I'm going to select my clip again, and let's make sure it's actually selected there. And over in the controls, I think what I want to do is, because I'm talking about change, maybe we can have the chroma change or the color change. So if I, I'm going to collapse the difference mat, and I'm going to go back to Luma Key, and let's open this up somewhat so we can kind of see what's going on here. And I'm going to open this window up more so that I can then jump that back. And now I've, I can see my keyframes better. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the clip. And I will create a keyframe for the, uh, actually, it's not going to be for the Luma. Sorry, it's going to be Ultra Key. And let's go down to where it says Color Correction. And we'll go to where it says Hue. OK, and then we're going to create a keyframe uh, for the actual uh, the Hue. So I'm going to toggle animation. I'm going to bring the animation back as an option. All right, and then I'm going to create that keyframe on the first frame. All right, and I'll leave that there. And then somewhere, Change. somewhere in say like this area, let's say that we're going to uh, stop that and have the hue change again. We'll put another keyframe in, and then we can have it come up in this direction. Okay, and then. We'll add that as a keyframe, and then we can come down back here to the very end. Let's jump that to the 
one over. And then uh, I'm going to add another keyframe. And this time I'm going to bring it back to say like a pink color, sort of this hot pink color somewhere in there. Yeah. OK. And so let's just see what happens now whenever we watch that. To inspire change to stop. OK. So it happens a little bit quickly. So if we wanted to do it in, in steps, we could. The other thing that we could do is we could pull this back further. And well, they also. We could also do it whenever I say oh and well. And well. somewhere like here. So if we move the clip back, we can see what happens. Well, the elements are changed. Let's try, let's try expanding it out and well, see if that gives us more of a timeline. Nature. And well, they also inspire change to stop. Something like that. that. And you might want to come back here, and it, it seems very, very degraded right now. So you could also come back and change the difference so the difference isn't quite so extreme, OK? Um, and that would be you know, pretty much for the whole, for the entire thing. And if we go back down here, uh, we can maybe turn some of the color up. That's a little bit harsh, like somewhere in here, maybe. Let's see what that does. And well, they also inspire change to stop. OK. And so if you wanted more steps for the color changes, we can go back and we can add more steps. So we just need to add more keyframes. So if we go back to Ultra Key and then back, back down to Color Correction and to Hue, you can see that there are all these different uh, places where everything is changing. So if you wanted different steps and stages in between here, you could uh, go and add as many keyframes as you wanted. I'm just going to, for time's sake, I'm going to leave this the way it is. Um, and so I'm going to open this back up a little bit. And let's like add some more audio and get some more layering going on inside of this so that you can hear the difference of what happens when we add more audio tracks uh, so that we don't just have the one. So I'm going to go back over here to my main project panel. And let's collapse video, and I'm going to look into the audio section. And let's uh, also collapse the audio a little bit more so that we can see more of the tracks. All right, so I'm going to go over here. And first of all, I'm going to add the radar sound. And it's going to start right at the beginning. So let's hear what that sounds like. If we want to go all the way back, you can click that, and it goes back to the beginning. Okay. Inspiration is something I find in everything. I can find Okay, and when you see if I'm going to pause that because otherwise it's going to get really loud. Over here in the in the right side where the audio meter is, you can see how it's getting in the red. So this file is way too loud. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. And by the way, you'll notice that this has it looks like two channels. That's because it has a right and a left channel and it's in stereo. I'm going to leave it that way. I don't want to turn it into a mono channel because I like the idea that it has two different channels for you know two different ears okay so I'm going to select that and I'm going to come back into the effect controls up here in the left top left and I'm going to expand out volume and then level and then for the entire track I'm just going to lower the sound level a lot let's try that inspiration is something I find in everything I can find it in looking at a bird on a wire because I know it'll fly away at some point, or in a stop sign. Graphically speaking, they're succinct and fundamentally beautiful in their elemental nature. And well, they also inspire change to stop. OK. Well, you can see that that helped with sound. And it looks like something happened to my clip. I might have accidentally deleted it. I'm not sure what I did. I'm going to recreate that really quickly. OK, so I recreated that really quickly. Or in a stop sign. Graphically speaking, they're succinct and fundamentally beautiful in their elemental nature. And well, they also inspire change to stop. OK, so we're good on that so far. And that's how we can adjust the sonar. And then we also have some other little blips and bloops that we can add 
uh, we have this thing called underwater breathing that I'm going to add as a track at the very beginning. And it's also going to be kind of loud, but let's check it out. Watch the audio meter on the right. Inspiration. That's a little bit too loud. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to the volume control, turn down the level significantly, and let's check that out. Inspiration is something I find. That might be a little lower than I want. I do want it to have some kind of, oops. And see, what I did, I accidentally added a keyframe. Let me undo that. I'm going to put my playback head at the very beginning because I want it to apply to the whole clip. And let's play. Inspiration is something I find in everything. That's okay. I can find it in looking at a bird on a wire. Because okay, and so that gives you some idea, and I could keep on adding these elements. Um, and then there's also uh, another thing that I wanted to add, um, which is going to be this song called Going Under, and that's going to be at the very beginning. And I can already tell you I know I'm going to want to lower the clip because it's a really good recording. Inspiration is something I find in everything. See, that's pretty loud. So again, I'm going to adjust the volume on that clip. And we're just going to go to the beginning of the playhead. We're going to lower it significantly. Let's see what that does. Inspiration is something I find in everything. I can find it in looking at a bird on a wire, because I know it'll fly away at some point. Or in a stop sign. Graphically speaking, they're succinct and fundamentally beautiful in their elemental nature. And well, they also inspire change to stop. Okay, um, and it looks like my to stop for some reason is a little bit shorter than I want it to be. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to zoom into the timeline some more. And let's find where it, where I actually want it to stop. To stop. Probably, let's try that and see if that's any better. To stop. That's a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to save my project. And uh, this is a really good starting place. I could keep on going, um, but you can see from all of the things that I've shown you how to do so far, uh, an enormous amount of stuff that you can do uh, to get started on your project. Um, and whenever uh, we get to the end, I would put in uh, title credits. And the thing is that if you want to put a title at the beginning, which you should, uh, with the word that you're starting off with, um, the other thing is that you could move all of your clips forward. All right, so if I do this, I can move all of the clips forward. And one of the things that's useful is that the keyframes will go with them. So if you watch... Inspiration is something I find in everything. I can find it in looking at a bird on a wire, because I know it'll fly away at some point. Or in a stop sign. You can see that the keyframes are still all intact, and that whenever you move the clips, that the keyframes that are on those clips move with them as well. Okay, so that gives you some idea of how that works. Um, but if you wanted to add, you know, some frames at the beginning that are going to be for your title, then you can do that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop this video here. This should get you to a really good starting place for your project. Okay. So get started and let me know if you have any questions.